What's going on, guys? One more to bring you guys a brand new episode of Washington Station, the best station for Washington football nation. Now, I missed Monday's video because I was traveling back from home to um, to college and I didn't have time to record a video um, and get it out. So, this video is going to be basically a recap of Sunday's game and also a little bit of what today's video was originally going to be, which was what the heck is going on with Taskin. So, uh, so at the recap, um, it was one and two, and number one in the division still. Um, lost to the Cleveland Browns, the Browns. Um, I consider it the second loss where we didn't lose to the other team. We just lost to ourselves. We beat ourselves up, and that is heavily on Dwayne. Um, so that's why I, this video fits to combine the two because to explain how this game went is also to explain, you know, what the heck is going on with Haskins. So the game started off good. Then the Cleveland um, took the lead. Then we came back, took the lead, and Cleveland took the lead and ran with it. Um, the biggest takeaway from that game is, well, obviously we lost Ioannidis for the season and Chase Young for at least this week. Hopefully he'll be back next week. He's not totally ruled out for Sunday, but I mean, it's pretty much ruled out, but, um, yes, if, um, I do want to apologize, partially. Last week, I spoke very negatively about Dontrell Edmond. I spoke very negatively towards him and heavily criticized his work. He played good. He caught two touchdowns. I think two touchdowns. One or two touchdowns, I think. And he had a couple good catches. I know we heard his hand. We had a couple good catches. And so um, he definitely uh, played much better in this game. So I have to give credit where credit's due. McLaurin bought out, you know, as I may give it to him. Antonio Gibson did all right. Um, Antonio Gandy Golden got a couple good catches. Good seeing him getting more intertwined into the game plan. And I hope to see more of that because he's. He dropped that one pass. It wasn't a great throw to begin with, but yes, he still needs to come down with it. But he had that good play where he got rocked by Carl Joseph. But um, he's doing absolutely good. I think the progression seems really good, but it's regression. I don't know if it's regression. It's just maybe what is not progression, and that's at the quarterback position. Our team relies heavily on Dwayne Haskins to well for the defense. The only time they scored most of the touchdowns was when we gave the ball to him on their side of the field. When they were on their side of the field way back, our defense was especially Montez Sweat. Because let's just say a moment, Montez Sweat balled out in that game. I mean, Montez Sweat was all over the field in that game. And um, he definitely was one of the only people that kept us in the whole game. But, um, you know, that's not enough. You know, uh, Dwayne needs to learn. And I know he said he didn't see it. And I, I saw a video this week of Thomas Davis talking to him about it back in training camp. He has this thing where the play is called. Does Scott Turner give him a primary receiver for a play? Possibly. Is the play designed where you're meant to throw to a certain receiver? Yes, there are plays where they're designed to where you throw it. To. There's Everybody's running the route, but there's only one person you're really supposed to be throwing it to. But... You do not let your defense, you do not let the, de the opposing defense know that you're throwing that. And Dwayne, all three of his picks, is staring down that player, which was either Don Chellman or Logan Thomas. When he stared them down, it was a pick. When you lead with your eyes, defense is a talk. It's one of the basics. It's one of the ABCs of defense. You not, When you're in coverage, or even when you're um, on the line, but most of the time when you're in coverage, just you you watch your guy. You watch the guy you're covering, but you watch that quarterback's eyes because that eyes will tell a story. That His eyes will tell a story in seconds if you just watch. And Dwayne's eyes told three stories. Sunday, and each of those stories ended up with it getting picked off. And I want to sympathize with the guy, but you did it to yourself. You stared down the receivers. I know you said, I love Dwayne. This is not me talking crap about Dwayne. This is not me no longer supporting him. I very much support him. I have a poster on my wall. I'll show it to you real quick. 
and ask him some pictures on the wall. So, I mean, I'm not like I'm trying to say the guy's no longer a good quarterback. He is a good quarterback. I think he, well, he not, he's not there yet, but he can get there. He's got to take the regressions. He's got to scan the field. You cannot stare down your receiver and expect that play to go well because it's not. Sometimes, yeah, if you had to zip on the ball, but some, the zip wasn't there. Dwayne has a zip. He can do the zip if he needs to, but that zip wasn't there. He's throwing it with a little bit of a lob, not necessarily a bullet. And when you got that lob and you're just staring at a receiver, that linebacker, cornerback, safety, whoever, can still watch exactly where you're throwing, know exactly where you're throwing, and will and we'll predict the play and we'll get. And then you're done. And then you're screwed because you threw three interceptions, turnovers. You turn the ball over too many times, you don't win games. We had five turnovers in that game. Three interceptions, two fumbles. Now, I don't put the, the fumble on Dwayne. That's Miles Garrett coming from his blind side. Jerron Christian is supposed to take care of that. And Dwayne was getting sucked into the pocket. There was no way for him to get out. So, I mean, what do you want him to do in that situation? So, I don't I don't blame Dwayne for the fumble. Um, well, don't him because if his hand is actually hurt, okay, you drop the ball. Really should have kept him holding on to it, but I'm not going to absolutely like go off on him because he hurt his hand. Um, Dwayne has got to take his progressions. And Ron Rivera, who's been a guy saying this team is young and need progression, he's noticing this team has talent. We have outstanding talent. We have possible playoff caliber talent. Because we won that first game. And we have stayed in both of these games unless the offense just can't produce. And he says he does have a limit for Dwayne. He does have a limit for Dwayne. Now, if you look at this and you criticize Dwayne, you can also go back and look at Josh Allen, that great quarterback for the Bills now. You go look at his first season, first start stats, and they're worse than Dwayne, by far worse than Dwayne. So go check those out as a point of reference. So I don't think there's any time soon we need to um, take Dwayne off the helm unless our defense absolutely starts playing outstanding and the offense is severely lacking, which we've seen two weeks in a row, or well, really one week, because Colin Murray kind of made clowns out of our defense. Um, but Dwayne has got to get better. He's got to make those reads. He's got to, if you know, you spike, you hike the ball, you snap it. You know Dontre Lemon is that guy. You need to look at McCoy. Look at Sims if he's out there. Look at Barber, McKissick, Gibson, whoever's the running back out there. You need to look at Logan Thomas. Possibly if there's a fourth receiver, you know, Candy Golden, because, you know, the offense has been in a lot of formations, which I like. You got to look at every single one of them. At least make the defense think you're trying to go through your progressions. If nothing else, if you know who you're throwing to, or if you know exactly where he's going to be and you practice it to a T where you know exactly where the receiver's going to be, do what freaking Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers does. Throws it without looking. Now, I don't think Dwayne's there yet because you're talking about two elite quarterbacks and one guy who's trying to get his feet off the ground. So, but I'm just saying. If you know that receiver, don't let the defense know that you know. That's the big thing. You can know. Play football is all about having your game plan. If the game plan calls for this, then yes, you do it. But you don't let the defense know what you're doing. That's my little spiel on that. Uh, we got the Ravens this week. So Friday's video, we talking about the Ravens. Um, it's a tough opponent. The Chiefs gave us a blueprint to how to beat them. The only question is, can we do it? Um, the other question would be, if we pull Dwayne, what would be the next option? Now, obviously, Alex Smith has been non-activated yet. I mean, he's he's on active roster, but he hasn't been on any game day rosters. Um, the starting 46, he's been on the inactive. Um, and Kyle Allen's been the backup. This is a hot take. If we had to pull Dwayne, because the rest of our team is playing lights out and he is hurting the team. Like if we have just more games of this week, I say you put Alex in there. Because when Alex was healthy, that's what we were doing. Our defense was stand up lights out and he was doing enough to get the ball going. 
Is he there yet? I don't know. I'm not in Nashburg right now watching Alex every day. Rivera's watching it. Rivera's like, he's, he's steadily improved. You think Kyle Allen will probably get put in there? Probably so. But I think if you're looking to win, you're looking for Alex Smith to get in there. Because we can say that now. If he's activated, look, I've, I've always said, I said this for a year, I did not want Jordan Reed or Alex Smith to return to football because of their better well being. But they both returned. Jordan Reed's hurt. And he sprained on that bad MetLife turf. Alex is back. That means I'm willing to vocalize my opinion for him to go out there and get banged up again. You know, because you're going to get banged up if you're playing quarterback, good or bad. You're going to get banged up. So at this point, put him in. All, but this is not me saying take Dwayne out. I'm saying play Dwayne all 16 games. And um, just a short note, um, we're still in one division. This, um, what I have noticed after watching three games for all teams, Division's not going to be won by who, who's the best. Who's the least worst is going to win a division. Um, it's possible that the winner of division will be below 500. It almost was that last year. We were 3 and what? 3 and 7, 3 and 10, and we're still in the playoff run, which is crazy, but it's true. So I think this week is going to be big. We had to show. If we can, I'm not expecting us to win Sunday. I'll go into more on Friday. But if we can at least stay in the game, that that proves enough to me. But Dwayne has got to improve. Cannot stare down those receivers. The defense needs to keep doing their thing. So thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that. Make sure to hit that bell button so you know about every single time I upload a brand new episode of Washington Station or a new video to my YouTube channel. We have a great day. Stay safe. This is the only beginning of the season. Nobody get too overreacted yet. We got a lot of football left to go. I hope you have a great day and I'm out. Peace.